subscribers. This video is going to be a school organization video. I've had a lot of requests for it and I think it's going to be really fun. I'm going to teach you how to take notes, the different systems that you might keep your notes in, the different supplies that you might need, and then how you might organize your planner to best suit your needs. At the end, I will show you um, a study plan and the way that I find myself studying and the way that it works for me. So stay tuned and I hope you enjoy this video. Talk to you soon. During high school, I always used what I call a three-ring ring binder, but when I got to college, I also discovered the notebook system. So I will first go through the three-ring binder system, which I feel like I've always used the same, and then I will go through the notebook system. Okay, with the three-ring binder, you have flaps that you can use, and you just have one binder for your for all of your classes so that's one big thing to carry around for all of your classes now you should carry some dividers inside of your three ring binder one dedicated to each class and what i do and this is for college what i would do is i would go ahead and just print out a syllabus for each class and put it in the front of each of my um, in the front of each of my subjects and that's what I would have there. I would also keep notes and I will get into note taking in a second but I also keep notes here and I indicate when each note starts with a little flag so that's what the flags are for and every section will have a syllabus or a course schedule in it. This way you can separate all of your classes. Now the notebook system is something that I did for a while. I would switch off every couple of quarters. And with the notebook system, I had one color notebook for each class, different color. And I would just carry these notebooks with me. So if I had four classes, I had four different colored notebooks. And the way I would use these is, first I would have a title page. And this title page would allow me to have different reminders with post-its or different things that I needed to keep track of here in the front and then I would have a contents page and the contents contents page just tells me where everything is located and I would start numbering my notes or anything that I had one thing about this notebook system is if I had any passed out papers or handouts I would just staple them in and they would just stay just like that and that's how I would keep my loose leaf papers within my course uh, documents. I do recommend getting one of the really um, 8 by 11 big notebooks if you're going to do this so you don't have to cut down your handouts in the process. Now as far as taking notes, I have used this system for years and this will make a lot of sense once I explain it to you better. Up here, this is called the Cornell note system. Um, the class goes up here. Then we have a title, a date, a page number. Then we have questions on this side, notes on this side, and answers on this side, vocabulary and definition on this side, statements and answers on this side. So I guess to better explain it, you have all your questions, vocab, and statements on this side, your notes, your answers, and definitions on this side, and all you do is fold here and then when you need the back of the page you will fold here and use this back of the paper. So here are my mock notes of the Cornell note style. I have the class up here, History 142. I have the title, California History Review. 
the date up here and the page number here. Then I have questions, for example, what are the four main regions in California? On this side, I would answer Central Valley, and then I would underline or highlight with my highlighter those important things that I just there wrote that I want to remember. And I would just do that all the way through and highlight important details. Another way that I take notes is for definitions or an outline. I call it an outline. So what I would do is I would start out with the letter A and I would outline everything. So phonemic awareness and then I would say one phoneme, two grapheme and give the definitions for these things. And then I would start out again with B. B can be found over here under phonics and then I C and D and that's called an outline form and that's what I would use if I was using and if I was reading a book or studying a book I would outline the book in that way. Here is another sample of the Cornell note style. I have the class. I switched it up. I have the date here, the, the page number there. And then I have just different statements. So the other one might have been more questions, but there's some statements here about the first day of school and then some highlighted information and notes on this side. And I feel that this really separates the thoughts and it really separates the way that you are comprehending the information and you will be able to later ask yourself questions based on what you took notes on. So in class, I do recommend just taking notes here, taking notes, and then going back and asking yourself questions based on your notes, and it's a great way to review. But also, if there is an outline form that your professor or teacher puts on um, on a slideshow, well then you can just put the main topics on this side, the, basically it's like the first slide of each topic, and then you write the notes on the other side. When studying, I think you always need a study plan so that you can be very organized in your studying. So here I created a study plan for a test that I was going to take. So what I have over here is a Cornell note style. I have the subtests and subjects being tested on right here. Then I have the materials I will need to study right over here. And so any books or any notes or anything that I will need. How much time will I have until the test? So I went ahead and added up how many days until the test there. Then I created a schedule. So I had a weekly routine with a color coding system. Down here I had the different subtests in different colors and I indicated that an X was an hour and 30 minutes and a check was 30 minutes to review. So all I did was indicate how many minutes I was going to study each day for each test and then it totaled up to three hours and 30 minutes of study. And then total, numbers of, total number of hours I would have studied for the test are down here. And that is the basic study plan. Along the same lines of studying, we have flashcards. You can get any flashcards that you want. These are the ones that I particularly used. So I have just the um, just the the vocab word here, and then back here, I went ahead and put the definition, and then I highlighted specific words that I might be able to focus in on, so I can remember it. Then on the front here, I just wrote a fact and I just indicated that it was a fact. And then it went on to the same thing with the flashcards. So I guess I had three different ways of determining what each thing was. I had that it was either an answer, a definition, or a fact, and that kind of helped determine how I was going to read the flashcards. Last but definitely not least, I believe that you need a planner to survive in school. I'm sure some of you are able to get away with not having a planner, but I think that if you were to try it, you would be even more organized. I've always had a planner in school. And I must mention that ever since I've been in school, I've always used maybe a Walmart Mead planner or a Target Mead planner, and it worked out perfectly. So what I'm going to do is show you 
basically what I did in those planners now in my Kate Spade planner so that if you do have a personal size or an A5 size Filofax or any type of planner, you can and you can go ahead and incorporate this system into those planners, whether it be big or small, whether it be um, wired, you know, a spiral bound planner, anything like that. So I hope this helps. So what I did was I made a mock-up of how I might use my planner or how I used to use my planner. So first I have some semester quarter goals here that I would make. I, I would say semester or quarter depending on your uh, college or university or even your school so these are just some tips that I'm going to give you as well as goals that I would make for myself do not procrastinate review class notes within 24 hours go to office hours once a month sit in the front of the class start a study group block out study time and be early to class and don't miss so I suggest creating some goals for yourself and as well as creating goals, these are some tips for you to go ahead and follow. So like I said, I always had a planner and I always had a monthly view. Now what I would do is I would take my, my syllabus that I got from my classes and I would mark out any important dates that I had for the entire quarter that I was going to be in that class. For example, I have here History 142, Math 370, and Math 301A. Now with these washi tape stickers, I would be able to go ahead and indicate different washi tape for different classes as well. And that's what I do here. It's a basic glance at what I need to be remembering for that month. And it's easy, it's color coded, and it's easy for you to recognize what you have to do. Now now before I get into it, these, these particular inserts are from Anasophia007 on Instagram and she has a wonderful website um, called Little Miss Anna's and Little Miss Anna's and I will link her below. She has some wonderful printables that you will love. So I'm just going to be using this her inserts for this particular video. Now this is the way that I would normally always do my planners it's always it was always a week on two pages and so what i did was i created basically what i used to do and put it here in the personal size first things first is to take your classes and make sure that you have them color coded and for example i have math 301a in green history 142 in pink and humanities 370 in blue and what i would do is every day that i would get assigned the homework and i'll show you this one in particular for Wednesday, all I would do was put the class in that particular color so I can easily recognize it without even reading it. And then I would have the homework for that particular class. Now when I was done with the homework, and that's why these are highlighted, I would highlight it off with whatever color that I want I felt like highlighting. Now this right here on the days that I didn't go to school because with college you go you don't go every day to the class sometimes you do I'm ass I'm assuming but for me I never did so I created a study plan on the days that I was off for example I went to work from this time to that time and then I created when I would study so that I had it all written down in Tuesday's day and that's what I would go by now if you were in high school and you needed a study plan you can do the same thing underneath here or you can have just a week study plan that you go by every day at the end of your week then these are really nice inserts because you can have a little space here for notes and I've just put a don't forget and just little notes about the homework so that is a week on two pages I wanted to go ahead and talk about the DIY fish day on two page inserts and show you how you might use that to plan your day in school. So over here in this corner, I use it as a study plan section. So I just, for that day, this is when I would study. And of course this is a mock-up, so the times might overlap and things. But for example, this is what I would, the times that I would study for these particular classes. I use this section here as a due section. So these are the things that are due on this day, particularly. This is just my schedule, my mock schedule for that day. 
And then on this side up here at the top, um, it's homework. So I just have the, sorry about the shaking, the homework indicated by little dots here for each class and then written so that when I am done, I can just check them off. And finally, a notes section. So the same thing with the little dots here and just explanation of the homework. You might need a section where you would explain the homework. Um, maybe the teacher mentioned something in class, uh, take notes on the chapters and look for keywords. So you would write that down for that class there in that section. And that is how I would plan on the DIY fish inserts date on two pages. Like I said, uh, this is just a mock-up, but this has definitely worked for me for years. And if you're wondering how to organize your classes a little bit more, I suggest giving this a try. Okay, so that was the end of the video. I want to say thank you so much for watching and I hope I helped you become a little bit more organized for school. And if you have any questions, don't forget to leave me a comment or a message and I will see you soon.